I was wondering if you could imagine sitting in a movie theater next to Winston Churchill, you watch Darkest Hour, yeah. and when the movie's over, the lights come up, and you lean over and you ask him, did I get this part right? What would you like to ask him about? Oh. Uh, did I get, did I get, um, this, uh, did I get the sparkle? Did I get the twinkle in the eye? I think. Um, I, I went back to a lot of source material and, you know, when you, when you're asked to do something like this, you, and also of obviously being British, you have this idea of who Churchill was and he, he very much, he was very much a sort of self-promoter, you know, he knew his brand, the silhouette, the, the, the Homburg, the cigar, the cane, you know, there's the, he, he, it's, it's a very iconic image of, of, of him. And um, I, w I was, I wondered how much of my memory of Churchill was contaminated or influenced by other actors that I played in. So I went to the source material and what I found was a man who was 65 years old, but skipping around like he was a sort of 20 year old and there was this sort of cherubic face and this sparkle and a twinkle in his eye, great sort of humour. Um, it, it was a feeling like um, um, that he might turn to the camera any moment and wink, you know, he had that kind of so that would be, I think that's probably what I would ask him. Did I get, did I get the spot, did I get the twinkle in the eye? Well, I think he'd tell you yes. Yeah. Um, I, talking about the research that you did, you can read all the books, you can watch the films, you can listen to the recordings, you can be in a makeup chair for hours. Do you remember a specific moment when you knew that you had him, when you had him down? Yeah, I, 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 well, I think it probably would have, it, it happened, when, how do I explain it? When you're, working in, when you're working in isolation and you're working on the physical, um, you're, if you're at home, it, you're in your jeans or your dressing gown or whatever, whatever it is in your kitchen, walking around and you know, doing, doing Winston um, or trying to find him. And there's that sort of pout of the lip that he had, and you what what you want to you want to feel it as like a sensation in the in the mouth or in the face. Um, but you're but you're obviously anchored to this, who, who I am. So once you see it complete, you I realised that there was less I needed to do, because the makeup was doing it for me. Um, it wasn't until everything was complete, until I had the costume and the clothes. The, the, yeah, it, it wasn't until then. I, I, I could feel him uh, close by, but he was still a little out of reach until I kind of put it all together. Um, and then but that happened, but then that happened quite quickly. I think all the work that I had put in, I had, I had over a year to really think about him. All things, everything became all things Churchill. And my, um, my, 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 my wife said that she would, she would go to bed with Winston Churchill, but wake <laughs> up with Gary. <laughs> <laughs> Which I think, I thought, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, that sounds, right, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. You mentioned uh, the makeup. Not the first time you've been sort of buried under makeup before, I think, yeah. of, of Hannibal and, and Dracula. Yeah. What is it like? What is that moment when you look in a mirror and you don't see yourself? Is it a weird mental trip? What is that moment like? Liberating. Liberating. Why is that? Uh, because... Um because I don't look like me, <laughs> basically, and uh, I can get away from all those things that that 
that I don't maybe like about myself or I, I, look, you get used to yourself watching yourself on a screen and you get used to the voice and the thing if you've ever heard a ever heard a tape recording back sometimes and you go oh my god do I sound like that you know so you get over you you get over those things very you have to I guess by nature of what of what you're doing um, but I still nitpick and when the the two, uh, actually the the two real occasions I have felt most relaxed and at, at most at ease have been um, Hannibal and Churchill. Really? So that says Mason something. Mason Verger that, and, 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 Winston and Winston Churchill. Churchill. So that says something about me, I suppose. I love you and Hannibal, by the way. Um, as we wrap up, I love that the movie focuses on one month of Churchill's life rather than tell, try to tell the entire story. Yeah. If someone were going to make a movie about one moment in your life rather than tell the story, what is the moment that would make the best movie? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, there was some, uh, I guess there was some drunken days back in the, back in the day that, uh, uh, that were... I guess might make might 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 make interesting television. I don't. So know. what happened during those, Gary? No, the um, uh, my childhood really. Yeah. Yeah, I think my child. I think, my, yeah, it was. Um, yeah, I. I mean, I got two. I have two sisters, older sisters, but, but they fled the nest pretty early on. So I grew up um, an only child and lived pr pretty, um, always lived in my imagination, you know. Um, and now look where, where that led. It, it, it's, yes, it's, it's worked out okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well, yeah well, we'll say that, an understatement yeah. of the year. Yeah. Mr. Oldman, Every once in a while you do one of these interviews and you know you're, you're interviewing someone for something special and this is one of those moments. Thank it was a, truly an honor to sit across from you. Very kind of you. Thank you very much.